Welcome to part two on our series looking at content mappings in disguise. If you're new here, my name is Rich and I'm making these videos to help you one up your live event production workflows. I'm assuming you've already watched part one where we told you all about direct mappings. If you haven't, the link is in the description below. Today we're focusing on feed mapping. Shortly after I finished the direct mapping video, I started to record this follow up on feed maps. As I started to edit, I was reminded of a video I saw a while back where John Ushai interviews YouTube mega celebrity Peter McKinnon. I'm going to show you the clip that I was thinking of and pray to the copyright gods that they look kindly on it. What were some of the problems with, you know, the photography space that you tried to solve when you entered it? Boredom. Just boredom. It, it's, it's, it was like orientation videos when you got a retail job and you had to sit down and watch all the safety procedures before you could put the uniform on. And they're never good videos. And I thought, we just got to have more fun. Like, I, we got to vlog and then show some real life examples and just have a bit of like humanity in this. Like, let's just like, it's, let's not take ourselves so seriously. It's just photography. If you haven't seen it, it's a fantastic interview and digs into some great topics around going pro as a creator. This isn't the first time I've thought about this quote. We obviously want to make videos that are much more engaging than the safety videos you're forced to watch at work. Although we've put together a pretty concise tutorial on using feed maps, we'd missed out a really important piece of context, which is that feed maps are probably the most important mapping type in disguise. I say probably, as if you get into virtual production workflows, then there's a couple of new mapping types there which are pretty exciting. But for everything else, and I'm talking theatre shows, corporate shows, TV shows, music and pop concerts, you're not going to program a disguise system without heavily relying on feed maps. They're going to make you faster, and possibly even make you more sexy too. No promises about that though. Let's get into it. If we go to the disguise user guide, we can find a definition for feed maps. It says, the feed mapping type allows you to subsample rectangular areas in a content area, referred to as the mapping canvas, and copy that content onto rectangles inside one or multiple screens. That's a great technical explanation of how feed mappings work, but it might be a little bit overwhelming for beginners. So let's simplify things a bit. You have your show content that you want to map from your timeline to the screens in your project. If you're sending the content to just one screen or multiple screens of the same size, the direct maps that we discussed last week will probably be your best choice. Feed maps come into their own when you want to map a portion of your content to a screen or when you need to map it to multiple screens of different sizes. It's actually even more powerful than that, but it'll be easy to understand if we jump into Disguise and work through some examples. Kicking this off, let's recap how we create mappings in Disguise. There's no direct way to create mappings at the top level. By that I mean, if you're looking at the visualizer interface, there isn't a button or keyboard shortcut that can bring up the mappings in your project. Therefore, when creating a new mapping, you need to navigate through an existing layer on the timeline to access the mappings menu. Start by giving the mapping a name, then select the desired type of mapping. In this case, we're going to add a feed mapping. Once you've selected the feed mapping, you'll see this interface. There's a small dialog box where you can set the resolution and a larger window which is separated by a white dotted line. I recommend setting the feed mapping resolution to match the resolution of the content that you're going to be using. If you're unsure about the resolution of your incoming content, you can right click on your file and then find the resolution listed as the second item in the information that appears. For example, using this test pattern, the resolution is 1920 by 1080. Below that, you can select your screens which you would like to map your content to. In this demo project, I have five screens set up and we'll add all five of them to this mapping. There's a stacking order to the screens. Their order from top to bottom governs how they're laid out in the mapping from left to right. If you're a visual learner like I am, then you'll likely want your feed map to be laid out in the same way as your screens appear in your stage. You can click and drag a screen to change its order. If you've made it this far and you're not subscribed, then you can miss out on part three. So make sure you hit that button and stay tuned for our parallel and perspective map video, which will be out very soon. Currently, you've created your mapping and added your screens, but your content's not being sent anywhere. To resolve this, right click within one of your screens to create two feed rectangles that are linked together. One rectangle will be on the mapping canvas and the corresponding rectangle will be below the white dotted line for your screens. You can then move and scale these feed rectangles. Modifying the rectangle above the dotted line defines the portion of your content that you're interested in, while the rectangle below the line determines how you would like it to appear on your screens. Let's try a few examples to show you some of the ways that I regularly use feed maps. Let's suppose you've got a piece of content or maybe even a camera input that always needs to have the same scale and positioning throughout your show. If you were only to use direct maps in your show, every time you needed that media, you would have to move and scale it on the layer. There's nothing truly wrong with that, but as the saying goes, it's better to work smarter and not harder. 
if I was in that position, what I would do is use a feed map as a scale and position preset that I could recall quickly. The next useful thing I'm going to show you is that you can slice up a piece of content and send it to multiple places. A great example of when this is useful is if you're using stock footage which has been rendered to a different resolution to your screens. Here's a piece that I just downloaded from Storyblocks. I'm going to map it full resolution to my center screen and then take slices out of it to send to the narrower screens on either side. The third example I'm going to show you is single content delivery. If you're building a big show or possibly even a small one, then you want to make file management as easy as possible for both yourself and your content team. In order to help both sides out, we often make the deliverable a single file with all the different screens for the show on it. Then we'll use a feed map to send that content out to the right places. Obviously the project that we have here is just an example, but I've created a pixel map that shows the kind of deliverable we'd ask for if this was a real show. You can see the five screens laid out in that file. We just need to set up the corresponding feed map. That's it for our session on feed maps for this week. A big thank you for joining us on this series. From everyone here at the Hive School, we'll see you in part three. Take care.